John Colo at OKRod.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and this is an episode that a lot of you guys have inquired about due to an Instagram post that I had actually when I make a raw vegan vanilla ice cream with a no dairy cream. <laughs> um, you guys wanted a video on how I made it, so now I'm making a video for you guys on how I make it. It is super simple, real easy, and it actually only takes three simple ingredients to make this raw vegan ice cream. Now I will let you guys know in advance that this does take some time making ice, ice cream from scratch, you know, from uh, vegan foods, but uh, I'm gonna take the time in this episode to share it with you guys in case you wanna do it. You know, I've met other raw foodists, for example, that say, John, I don't believe that you take an hour to like make your ice cream. Well, yeah, from the time you get in the coconuts, chopping them up, scooping out the meat, shaving them off, blending them, and then extracting the, the rich cream, blending it on up, and then putting it in the ice cream maker. Man, it could take like an hour. And I know a lot of you guys might just want to go down the store and buy some vegan ice cream in the section and just take it home and eat it. Now, when you're eating that stuff, you know, you're eating all kinds of monodiglycerides and all kinds of other processed sugars that are not whole food sources of sugar. And in this case, uh, fats. They may be isolated nutrients, which I'm not a big fan of. So I want to encourage you guys to always eat whole foods. And yes, it's going to take a little bit longer. And if you don't want to do this recipe, then of course I would recommend you guys make some kind of banana ice cream recipe, which, you know, people say, oh yeah, it tastes like ice cream. And yeah, don't get me wrong, banana ice cream tastes great, lower in fat, but you know, it doesn't have that mouth feel, that, that rich texture of uh, real ice cream. And so that's what this recipe that I've created simulates, like it simulates raw vegan vanilla ice cream to the tea. And so anyways, let's, let's get into it. So uh, it's very, this is a very simple, easy recipe, only three ingredients. Number one, we got coconut here, a couple different kinds, I'll explain that in a second. We got uh, 16 dates right here, pitted dates. And we got uh, one vanilla bean, we'll talk more about this vanilla bean in a second. And of course, we got the coconut water that came out of the coconut, uh, you know, that I got the meat from. And we got about 28 ounces of water. So the first thing that's critical to make this recipe work properly is you need to make sure you get the right coconut. So in general, I use two coconuts, and I usually use the uh, white kind coconut. That's this kind of coconut. Um, a lot of you guys may be familiar with like the more brown kind. This kind is too old. The meat's too thick and too hard, and it doesn't come out quite the same consistency. I mean, it'll work if you don't have anything else, but I would recommend getting the white ones. The white ones are basically just younger than the brown ones, but on, on that end, uh, sometimes there's really uh, young white ones and more mature white ones. So in the case of this ice cream, you want to pick a, a more mature white one. How can you tell if it's a more mature white coconut? Well, you kind of want to look through the white and look underneath the white. So if we like look underneath the white here at the bottom, you can kind of see that it's actually brown, like a dark brown shell underneath the white color. So that's kind of what we're looking at, and that's a perfect consistency to get. Um, also, when you shake the white coconut, uh, for this recipe anyways, you want, it, you want to hear the water slosh around, because if it's totally full of water, that means the meat may be too thin, and you're not going to have enough fat that's actually going to make the vegan cream for this ice cream recipe. The next thing I do is I pop out one of the holes, drain out all the water in, in, into containers, the same uh, water that I'll be using to blend up and make the cream. And so once we do that, uh, then we basically take the, uh, a cleaver and just basically tap it and turn it all the way around like, like on the equator. And then this basically breaks in half. And what you're going to have is a half that kind of looks like this. And now the challenge is you're going to have to get the coconut meat out of the coconut. So then I have a, a coconut demeating tool. If I remember, I'll put a link down below this video to the coconut demeating tool. You basically go between the uh, coconut a shell and the meat and you just uh, wiggle this all the way around and I've already pre-done that for this video actually so I'm making it look really easy and uh, basically what happens is then you could just go ahead and pull out the meat hole now the next step is once you pull out the meat you're gonna see some of this testa material you know uh, generally you don't have to pull this off it may affect the flavor so I like to pull it off also it makes for a cleaner presentation if you don't have all the brown because that'll make your ice cream much darker than it really needs to be. And also sometimes when you're uh, 
using these coconuts, sometimes it may be going bad. So if you if it's like a little bit like maybe more brownish or pinkish, reddish, that's maybe a discoloration, maybe mold going on. So that's another reason why I encourage you guys to uh, you know shave it down. So uh, this is what it looks like when it's shaved down and not shaved down. And so basically I just take a knife to shave it down and I just put this down and I just go down and basically peel off a really, really thin layer on the, uh, on the coconut to uh, prepare it for my recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this off camera. We'll come back at you uh, when I'm ready to uh, mix up all the ingredients. All right, got all that coconut up, so we're just going to go ahead and take all this coconut meat and we're just going to go ahead and throw it up in the blender. Now the reason why I'm using the coconut instead of a tree nuts is because we're just trying to get a cream and when you use the nuts you also add the fiber which is something I don't want because in real ice cream there's like no fiber man. It's basically just like fat <laughs> from milk. <laughs> I don't want you guys to drink any milk. Milk is not necessary neither are any dairy products actually uh, based on my research. Um, there's nothing in milk that we can't get from other plant foods and furthermore um, milk can increase the rate of IGF-1 in your body which will basically uh, supercharge cancer growth and whatnot. In addition, all milks, unless it's human milk, contains foreign proteins which our immune systems uh, may uh, have an immune response due to the dairy and uh, so it's also uh, inflammatory in my opinion especially if you drink too much. But I don't like to drink any, so that's why we're using the coconuts. So uh, besides the coconuts, we're going to also add the uh, coconut water here. I got 28 ounces today. And uh, let's see, we're probably going to add maybe like, uh, we're going to start off with like uh, 20, maybe like around 24 ounces. All right, so I think we added about uh, 24 ounces of water there, and the next step is we're just going to simply uh, blend this baby up on high. So we got that blended up. Now you don't want to blend this mixture too long because otherwise you're going to extract too much of the fat and then you may get like uh, like uh, like coconut fat on the bottom of the blade that's not going to come out when you're trying to extract it. So once we have this mixture, this is not the mixture we're going to use by any means because we got all that coconut fiber in there. We want to remove the fiber. That's very important. All right, I think we're done blending there and uh, once we got that done, Shake that down and show you guys what we got. That's what we got right there. This is a really thickened mixture with uh, all the coconut fiber. We're not going to use this mixture. What we need to do is extract all the uh, coconut milk out of this or uh, cream into uh, you know without the fiber. So how we're gonna how I'm gonna do that actually is I'm gonna get, go ahead and use the Omega VSJ 843 juicer. This is the best juicer I found for extracting coconut milk because it works so easily. We're going to put a sieve on here to make sure we don't get any fiber into the, into the coconut milk mixture because that's going to change the texture and put grit into our uh, ice cream, which I don't want. The other thing you guys could do if you don't have one of these juicers is you could actually just take a net milk bag and squeeze it out. That's uh, a lot more messy and I'd rather clean the juicer than clean a net milk bag and uh, you know milk my coconuts. <laughs> All right, let's turn that baby on and we're going to go ahead and uh, pour this in a little bit at a time. Oh, we got to get the catch bowl there. So as you guys can see, as we pour this in, what we're going to get on the way out right there, we're going to get a really rich coconut milk. And as you guys can see over on this side, we're getting just the, uh, the fiber only. And I really like that on this machine, you literally just pour this in, it auto feeds, and as you guys can see, the rich milk's coming out 
and the uh, fibers coming out on this side. Super simple, super easy. All right, so it looks like the uh, Omega VSJ juicer made quick work of extracting the coconut milk. And if I go ahead and take up some of this uh, pulp here and squeeze this, you guys can see I'm not even squeezing any uh, milk, more milk out from my fingers. So actually the VSJ did quite an efficient job at this task. And uh, this is the very way that I actually make my own coconut milk out of the coconuts using the same technique. To do that, it's a little bit different. I'll add the coconut uh, to the craft, then I'll fill up the craft up to the 32 ounce mark, including the coconut that's already sitting in there. That makes a nice milk. Uh, pretty much this time I put two coconuts and uh, 24 ounces of coconut water to make even a little bit thicker ratio there. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and shake out this sieve to make sure we got all the delicious uh, milk in there. Now I may be calling this a milk, but you know, for me, I need to make a cream consistency, right? A milk is good for drinking. You really want to have a higher level of coconut fat in there if you're making an ice cream. Uh, this might be a little bit too thin by the looks of it. So if you're going to do this recipe solely using the two coconuts technique that I showed you guys, you may want to reduce the amount of liquid that you actually put in uh, to the blender. I'm going to add something else to kind of give it some more body here today. So once you have this mixture, what you're going to do is uh, rinse out your blender crafts. I already did that, so it doesn't have any leftover grit from the previous step. We're just going to go ahead and pour that in. And then now we get to add the other ingredients. So we're going to go ahead and add the uh, 16 dates here. I think these are some honey dates. Um, dates are my sweetener of choice. You know, this is a whole food source of sugar. Not only is there sugar in the dates, there's also fiber, uh, vitamins and minerals and other phytonutrients and even things like uh, the potassium. The dates are higher in potassium than even bananas. So figure that one out. And if you don't have dates, use some other kind of dried fruit. Now if you use different kinds of dried fruit, it may change the flavor of the recipe just a little bit. I do not advocate the use of any extracted kind of sweeteners. Uh, such as agave nectar, even if it's raw agave, you could just squeeze the agave in there. It's so easy, John. Well, no, man, I pit the dates and put it in there because that's a, a better source of nutrients. You know, I want to focus on whole food nutrients, not extracted, even if they're called raw, raw palm nectar or coconut nectar or whatever kind of sugar you all use. I want you guys to use real sources of sweetness. You know, another... One that I have used in the past is freeze-dried fruits. That could get kind of expensive, but that's like the ultimate sweetener there. All right, so the only other ingredient we're going to need to add are is one whole vanilla bean here. And uh, that's, once again, I'm not using vanilla extract extracted in alcohol or glycerin or all this kind of stuff. I use a whole real vanilla bean. The vanilla beans I like are this brand right here. It's the uh, Tahitian Gold. Uh, Co. out of Torrance, California, TahitianVanilla.com. This is the best vanilla beans i found. Whew, man, they're really fragrant. They're nice. And also, these ones are raw if you get the right variety. They sell many different kinds of vanilla, but I believe the Tahitian variety, uh, they don't need to be blanched before they're sun-dried, so they can be considered truly raw. And if you're saying, John, I got that vanilla powder, man, is that stuff good? Nope, according to my research, none of the vanilla powders are really raw, despite saying on the label, they're lying to you. They need to have basically a heat processing step to kill the microbial growth that may occur uh, due to the grinding and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, Tahitian gold vanilla beans, definitely my thumbs up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, instead of putting this whole vanilla bean in, we just basically uh, chopped it up into little pieces. This will make a little bit easier work for the blender to, uh, you know, extract out all the flavors from the vanilla. And I'm not sitting here slicing this in half and only uh, squeezing out the middle, the caviar, which actually there's quite a lot of caviar in these Tahitian gold uh, vanilla beans. Because I want to use a whole food once again. I'm all into whole foods. So, you know, this mixture right here, look at this. If you guys see it shake around, that's pretty watery. That's not really going to get make a good ice cream texture. We need a little bit, a little bit more thick. So what I'm going to be adding today also is the meat of one young coconut. So this is a young coconut here, and the meat's uh, much more pliable and, uh, and I would say silky. 
and this will give us some extra uh, firmness to our thick smoothie that we need for the recipe. Also give us a little more body there because we don't want it uh, too thin going in because then you're going to have more of a, uh, like, a, I don't know, sorbet without the fat instead of like a nice, rich, delicious ice cream. All right, so once we got all these in there, we're gonna go ahead and hit that for 90 seconds and crank it up. So once your blender is done blending, you're gonna have a really nice consistency here. It's gonna be the consistency of a nice, uh, kind of thick smoothie there. And the next step is we got the uh, ice cream maker out. So this is actually De a DeLonghi uh, gelato machine. And basically this is unlike most ice cream makers you guys could buy. A lot of the inexpensive ones have like a little carafe thing you actually just put inside the freezer or the bowl, then you take it out, you put it in the machine, and the bowl's frozen. Whatever you put in there, you know, will be really cold, and they have a motor that spins it or spins around a little paddle like this. Uh, this is the better version because this actually has a built-in compressor that is basically just like your freezer uh, in your house. It basically chills the whole bowl. And uh, another thing about this unit is it actually has a stainless steel bowl. Got to watch out. A lot of these units actually have a uh, Teflon coated bowl, which I do not recommend. Uh, you know, you could scratch the Teflon coating off and it may be getting in your food, which I don't think is definitely a good thing. And uh, yeah, so these work infinitely better than one of the ones that you have, uh, you know, that you put the thing in the freezer and freeze it. The other the one that may work really well for you guys also, if you can't afford one of these guys, these guys may run $150, $200 or more, uh, depending on what model and make you get. Just make sure to check the reviews and make sure it's a good model. Uh, but if it does regular ice creams, it'll do these raw vegan ice creams too, so don't worry. But I think I find that like, you know, having a good cold temperature is really critical to making a good ice cream that actually has a nice consistency that's not like too watery. And that's why I don't like making the banana ice creams in the blender because it whips it up too much, it oxidizes it too much, and that's why I prefer to do that in like a slow blender, or I mean a slow juicer, uh, rather. Anyways, uh, I guess the trick with this, we're just gonna go ahead and take this mixture, pour it on in there, and really important, you don't wanna fill it up to the top. I like to just fill it maybe just a little bit past um, halfway, and we got a little bit of extra batter here, maybe we'll make a second batch later. And we're gonna go ahead and put the top on. Close this up, and we're going to go ahead and turn the lever, uh, let's see, to uh, chill, cold, and it does help if you turn this on to the uh, cold, uh, chill, before you actually even put the stuff in there, so I didn't do that tonight, uh, but we're just, just going to chill as it's running, and it's going to take a bit longer for it to run, so we're just going to go ahead and set that up. Basically what's happening is it's uh, freezing the container, at the same time it's rotating it, so this is basically allowing the mixture to not just like freeze but you put it in the freezer um, you, you know because it'll just freeze like an ice block but this actually keep it keeps it aerated and, and freeze it at a, at a slower rate so if you actually don't want to buy one of these guys you can kind of simulate this kind of if you take your mixture and put it in a nice like stainless steel bowl in your freezer and then I put it in there and every five minutes take it out and stir it a little bit and then put it back in there make sure you scrape down the sides that way you could kind of do something like this, but it's definitely not the same. And I, like my grandfather taught me, get the right tool for the right job. Anyways, this is going to take some time. So I thought I'd go ahead and uh, put my stopwatch on for you guys to see how long it took. And I got some other stuff to do, so we're going to come back at you uh, when I'm done, heart done and ready to uh, get out all my raw vegan ice cream. All right, so I think it's about done. We're at 46 minutes, so it's definitely taking a long time. Uh, one of the things I like to do is actually I like to uh, uh, pre-cool the ice cream maker before I use it. So actually, as soon as I know, as soon as I know I'm actually going to be making the ice cream in the blender and starting the process, I'll actually plug this in and let it get cold first. That'll definitely reduce some time. I think in the past maybe it's taken me maybe about a half hour, roughly. Anyways, you'll hear the motor kind of laboring a little bit. It'll kind of slow down a little bit. That means it's getting kind of thicker. Then you can kind of look in there and it's expanded a lot actually. I probably overfilled it a little a bit today, but uh, I want it to run long enough because if you don't let it run long enough, it's gonna be like a slush versus like a nice thick raw vegan ice cream. All right, so let's go ahead and get some bowls out here. Got my ice cream scoop. Let's see what we got. All right, we're 
gonna go ahead and pull this out for you guys so you guys can see that. Look at that, raw vegan ice cream, upside down. Hey, it doesn't come out. <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and uh, scoop in here. Got a nice little ball. All right, so this is what we got right there. Now the moment of truth. I'm gonna go ahead and try it. Mmm. Definitely really good. I think I like it better, a little bit better, when I don't put the extra uh, young coconut meat in there and actually I reduce the amount of liquid uh, going in. I think I had a little bit too much liquid this time, so it's not quite as good. But every time's a little bit different. So what I would recommend for you guys is maybe take out the water of the coconuts that you're processing and just use the water that's contained within those two coconuts and maybe add a, a tad bit more if you got it, but otherwise just those two waters, you should be good to go and uh, make a nice thick uh, mm, raw vegan coconut ice cream. I think I'm gonna enjoy this. And of course, uh, had to make one for the girlfriend. She loves this too. Oh, and her sister. My girlfriend, I made this for my girlfriend's sister who just, she doesn't eat raw vegan or anything, or even vegan. She just, she just eats regular ice cream and drinks Cokes, all the regular stuff, right? And she said, this tastes like real ice cream. Well, the time that I made it for her anyways. So if, uh, yeah, if it won her heart over, it'll definitely win your guys' hearts over. And uh, any of your friends or family members that don't necessarily eat raw or vegan, you can dazzle them with this ice cream that just tastes just like the real thing. I guess that's it for today's episode. If you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give me a thumbs up to let me know I'll be doing more recipe videos in the future. You know, I've been making recipes now for the last 22 years, and I'm pretty good at it by now, hopefully. And uh, also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge, over 450 episodes on this channel at this time. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes I have coming out of every five to seven days. And uh, finally, be sure to share this video with somebody so they, too, can make some delicious raw vegan ice cream. All right, so uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.